Hello everybody, John from Movie Balance here, back with another movie review and today I'm going to be discussing the 2016 release, Kubo and the Two Strings. Kubo and the Two Strings is the latest film from the talented stop motion animators Laika Studios. It follows the story of a young boy who is forced to flee his evil grandfather with his mother after having his left eye vengefully taken out able to weave magic by plucking away at the strings on his shamisen. He endures a journey full of hardship, loneliness and familial ghosts from his past. Never complaining, however, he shows a wisdom beyond his years, leaning on his memories and love to guide him through. It begins with Kubo, played by Art Parkinson, and his mother fleeing their evil family on a small boat caught in a choppy and dangerous storm. If you must blink, do it now. The protagonist narrates as the pair encounter trouble, both being flung into the water, before ending washed up on a beach. Kubo's small form is seen beneath a blanket at this point, his mother quickly rushing to comfort him before the film cuts to the present. The two of them are next seen living an isolated existence in a small cave, high upon a large jutting rock formation near the shore. And Kubo's mother by this point is a pale shadow of her former self, and looking frail, exhausted, and extremely forgetful. Kubo's loneliness is palpable in these early stages, which perhaps explains his regular jaunts to the nearby village. On the first visit we see him make, he puts on a magical show for the residents, using his shamisen, a lute-like instrument, to bring wonderful, complex, little origami characters to life, as he displays quite the talent for storytelling. Time eases by rather quickly as the travails of a small warrior play out until finally darkness approaches, forcing Kubo to suddenly stop and make a quick exit, much to the chagrin of the villagers. Returning to his mother afterwards, we are given a small insight into Both's backstory through her sad story of his late father Hanzo, a brave samurai warrior. She then provides a gentle warning to her son not to remain out too late in the darkness or his grandfather the Moon King, played by Ralph Fiennes, will come for his other eye. Kubo then returns to the village, presumably at some point in the near future, and speaks with the same kind-hearted old lady seen previously. He's encouraged to stay later, to enjoy the fireworks show and other festivities taking place during the celebrations. Ignoring the previous warning from his mother, Kubo becomes distracted, emotional, and quickly frustrated at his failed attempts to communicate with his dad. He loses track of time as he forlornly watches the other villagers' lanterns fill with light after seemingly successful contacts are made with their deceased loved ones. Looking up quickly he realises his error as the light within the lanterns extinguish and the cold shrill laughs from the sisters, his two aunts, echo through the woods. A quick chase takes place before his mother makes an intervention and uses the last of her magic to save him sacrificing her own life in the process. When Kubo awakes, the sight of a snowy tundra meets his eyes, and before him is a talking monkey, brought to life from the small token he carried everywhere with him, and it goes by the name of Monkey, who would have guessed it. Uh, now she tells him to hurry and follow her, or risk being discovered again by his aunts and grandfather. Seeking refuge uh, within a cave, the pair eat whilst the now inquisitive Kubo is given three questions to be answered by his new guardian. Echoing his mother's last words, he is told that he must find three pieces of Hanzo's armour in order to defeat the Moon King once and for all, these being the Sword Unbreakable, the Armour Impenetrable, and the Helmet Invulnerable. Heading out on the quest, guided by an origami samurai come compass, it doesn't take long for them to cross paths with the clumsy multi-talented, forgetful and extremely likeable half-man, half-beetle creature known as Beetle, played by Matthew McConaughey. Sharing a vague connection to Hanzo himself, he's extremely keen to join in on the whole adventure business. Together, this unlikely trio set about collecting each armour piece, enduring several battles along the way towards the climatic finale, whether it be fighting a gargantuan skeleton whilst Kubo tries to find the sword unbreakable lodged in its skull, or the dual fight in the long lake between Kubo, Beetle, and an ensnaring underwater creature, whilst Monkey battles one of the ants on a magical leaf boat above the surface. 
Managing to collect the first two parts, Kubo was tricked by his grandfather within a dream into travelling to his father's former fortress, believing the final piece, the helmet, is there. This in fact turns out to be a trap, with the remaining ant lying in wait for them. There's a few good twists at this point which I'd prefer not to discuss in the review, but needless to say afterwards, a lonesome Kubo, filled with more determination than ever, and now aware of the actual location of the helmet, and vulnerable thanks to his origami compass friend, heads back to the village to claim it, and set up one last battle with his grandfather. The Moon King aka Kubo's grandfather predictably appears at the village trying to smooth talk his grandson into giving up without a fight. When it becomes apparent that this won't happen, his veil of friendliness soon slips leading to a thunderous battle between the pair. The Moon King transforming into a giant serpent initially has the upper hand before Kubo decides to ditch the armour and return to his trusted Shamizen. Now strung with one of his mother's hair strands, he utilises the magic of love and memories of his family within him and his fellow villagers to finally come out victorious. His grandfather doesn't die however, but merely becomes a mortal man once again, appearing forgetful and frail, much like his mother at the beginning. The villagers decide to forgive him, rewriting an alternate background for the now amnesiac. There's just one final poignant scene involving Kubo returning to the river with a lantern, this time it successfully lights and he's once again reunited with his parents. There's some cracking performances in this film, Mark Parkinson does a wonderful job as Kubo injecting some real emotional gravitas into the character, to the extent where you can't help but bond with him over the course of his journey. Charlize Theron is a real standout as Monkey, the no-nonsense voice of reason within the trio of heroes, whilst McConaughey's portrayal of the heartless, good-intentioned Beetle helps to inject just the right amount of humour into what is a fairly sombre affair at times. Ralph Fiennes is flawless in his relatively short cameo as the Moon King. He's proven that he can nail the villain roles numerous times before, and this is no different. Speaking of villains, Runa Mari does a great job doing the double duty as the sisters, and an honourable mention must be given to George Takai, who plays a mere villager, which should help give a sense of the overall roundness of the cast. I can't do a review on this film without discussing the visuals. Uh, the visuals in this film are truly tremendous. Major kudos to Leica Studios for the unbelievable attention to detail within the characters, the buildings and the creatures, especially the giant skeleton. The leaves boat that Kubo built using his magic was astonishingly beautiful looking. I really can't praise the visuals enough here. Uh, I'm a massive advocate and fan of stop motion animations. And there's moments in this film where you really do forget that it is stop motion and the brain tricks you into believing it's just CG. I actually read there was 27 separate people working on individual scenes with a week's work encompassing 3-4 to four seconds of footage. That alone should blow your mind, it certainly blew mine. Uh, the score is also extremely good in this film. Oscar winning composer Dario Marianelli does an impressive job of building a score around the shamisen parts played by Kubo, expanding these simple little melodic lines into a full-blown orchestral score. There's obviously a real Japanese theme, which given the film's setting shouldn't be much of a surprise to anybody, but it's blended together beautifully, and it helps add a real emotional layer to the film. As a massive Beatles fan, I also have to give a shout out to the While well My Guitar Gently Weeps cover by Regina Spector at the end too, which was a rather cool little version. I thoroughly enjoyed watching this film, I've always been a fan, as I said, of stop motion when I was younger, with James and the Giant Peach and the Wallace and Gromit TV series in particular being firm favourites. Admittedly, animation isn't a genre that I have kept up watching into my adult years, although that has changed over the last year or so with my forays into that genre increasing on previous years. But I have nothing but respect for the dedication it takes to make this style possible. But it's not just the visuals in this film, it's the great little story and some brilliant performances that really make it an all-encompassing fantastic watch and I highly recommend giving it a watch if you haven't already seen it, you will not be disappointed. And this gets a flawless 5 out of 5 for me. Remember guys, if you're enjoying the content we're putting out, then do subscribe to us on YouTube at Movie Burner Entertainment and on iTunes and Google Play at the Movie Burner Podcast. We're also giving us a little follow on Facebook and Twitter at Movie Burners. You can also catch up with all the latest reviews we're putting out on the Movie Burner blog at MovieBurnerEntertainment.org. Until the next time, goodbye.